I'll be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Yep. Hey, yeah, one of the things that I wanted to show, did you, uh, I guess everybody keeping up with the, the news cycles that goes on out there. Um, somewhat, and, somewhat. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to, to I, I want to talk about the topic I want to talk about today for we start prayer and uh, start the, start the uh, session. Uh, the title is Believers Walking Under the Power of God Almighty. Um, and it, it, it was really focused on the fact is that I was talking to Chris yesterday, and you know, obviously our conversations will be very enlightening on certain things. And one of the things that we had brought up was the um, there was a shooting this week, uh, I guess this week, I guess in Jacksonville, Florida. Uh -oh. Yeah. You see me? You see yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can. What I wanted to do is show this video, and and we, hey, brother Jackson, one thing I wanted is that your your school and <laughs> it in Alpha, <laughs> Alpha, uh, where we talk to the kids about how to engage when you encounter the police officers and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. As a matter of fact, we got uh, I've got the, the Warner Robins police right now trying to put a video together for me for that about that same topic. Yeah, I think we need, I think people need more training on this stuff because, and I talked to Chris before, because I, I know one time we had a conversation about comply, complying, you know, uh, and I'll tell uh -huh. them that one of, one of the things about that is dealing with the fruits of the spirit is on the compliance, you know, self-control. You, you got to maintain your control regardless of the other person. So so in Jacksonville, Florida, was an 18-year-old that was a, uh, killed and the article saying he was shot 35 times but I don't, he wasn't shot 35 times uh, what happened was he was he was a four or three and pulled over in the car right for a traffic violation mm -hmm. and um, the uh, driver the guy said he thought he smelled marijuana he was smoking marijuana in the car so he pulled out the driver first, and the driver complied. The driver got out of the car, and uh, and they 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 de at least they detained them, putting handcuffs on them. Uh, and then they the passenger, the backseat one, was also pulled out of the car. I guess he was pulled out, uh, or he complied and got out. And then the second one. I mean, the third one would not get out the car. And I wish the video show, but the only guy's going to do that. I can send a link out to you. The, he, he called home and said, Mama, they're going to kill me. I just, wanna, I just want you to tell everybody I love them. And uh, he reached underneath the seat of the car, and there was a there was a handgun, apparently, supposedly a handgun underneath the car, seat, car seat, passenger seat. Wow. And it appears that he, as he called his family and said, tell them I love them, they're going to kill me. They were saying, brother, you know, they kept trying to de-escalate it. They kept trying to say, get out the car, we're not going to hurt you, it's going to be all right, you know. Uh, but I guess he feared for his life. And what he did was he bent over, they said, based on the video, and I can't get it up, but I'll send you a link on it. Um, he bent over and he shot himself in the head. And and then the, the police, because they heard the gunshot, mm -hmm. they did rapid fire into the car. Started fire. Yes, yes sir. Mm -hmm. they, they was, somebody was trying to claim they fired 35 times. I don't think it was 35 times, but they did shoot. Uh, numerous times into the car. They shot up the car after they heard a gunshot. And the, 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 the piece, I guess, I was concerned with Brother Jackson was the uh, the compliance piece. You know, being able just to comply. Mm -hmm. you know? Well, 
you, this was the thing. Why did they pull them over? They said it was a traffic violation, some kind of traffic stop. Okay, they say that, but if they know there was no traffic violation and being pulled over, I understand the guy panicking. Yeah, because because a lot stop. of times that 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 is the uh, the issue. I mean, it's happened to me plenty of times. Yeah, yeah. Cause it said, it said like a, here's an article on it right here. It was like, and I'll show it to you. It, it said it was a traffic stop, but it didn't get where they said. That ain't it. Wrong page. Oh, you see the article? I guess you do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Jacksonville. Yeah, uh, eighteen year old. Uh, that's his name. If you want to look it up later, Devon Gregory. Uh, did it find? The person was shot and killed by four police officers during a traffic stop. So they didn't say what the traffic stop was. But it definitely. Okay, so go ahead. Video cameras, the officers. They, yep, they had, cam they had the cameras. Yep, they had cop cam. Because they actually showed that they were trying to de escalate, even though they had their guns out. Uh, <laughs> so they did show they were trying to de escalate. This the uh, situation, but he wouldn't come out. You know, it, it says right here. I think it said the uh, water said officers who eventually who initially pulled over the uh, car with three people inside for failing to maintain a single lane. Now that, and that's very easy to pull somebody over on that too, right? You know, you know, you touch a white line, you can pull somebody over for that. Uh, and For then PJ, he's the line. yeah, single leg. This see my cursor moving around this paragraph right here. And then he had, after several minutes of trying to talk with the passenger, but then when you, you move over and you ride that lane for a minute, and you come back and then you may move over to the right, you know, and <laughs> yeah. you see that's that could be what they saw, right? Yeah, yeah, right. And he said, you know, so in other words, he smelled, he said he's accused of the smell of marijuana. Uh, but it said right here, they tried to talk to the guy for about several minutes. I don't know what they're moving for. Here's a, here's a quick video of it. The other one ain't playing for some reason. See if I can get past the commercial. May not even be worth it because the bandwidth is not going to cooperate yeah. with it. But what I do is I, yeah. I I'll send it I'll send it to you. But the, the what I talked to Chris about was, you know, you know, Chris was talking about that past. The, why we got to be tonight? Passing. Jacksonville police continue. The medical examiner has advised that Devon Gregory suffered a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The medical examiner did not state if that self-inflicted gunshot wound was Gregory's cause of death. News for Jacks reporter Quilly Peel joins us live now to show us what our News for Jacks crime and safety expert Ken Jefferson is saying about the video. Corley. Based on what happened inside the car, Ken Jefferson believes the reason why officers opened fire was because Devon Gregory used the weapon on himself first. He says that the officers reacted because they couldn't risk Gregory potentially hurting anyone else. Because I don't want to hurt you, man. I don't want to hurt you. None of these officers out here want to hurt you. For a majority of this 19 minute long body camera video, News for Jack's crime and safety expert Ken Jefferson says, Officers try to de-escalate their interaction with Devon Gregory during a traffic stop. These officers are pleading with this young man who is refusing to cooperate. He has his hand, his right hand, underneath the seat. JSO says officers made a traffic stop on Cassatt and San Juan Avenue Tuesday night. An officer claims to smell marijuana and takes the driver into custody. The video then shows Gregory in the passenger seat. Hey, don't reach under there. Hey, hey, stop. Do not. Stop fing reaching. Do not reach. Pull your hands. Oh, get get my phone. Hey, let, oh, grab my let me see your hands. Gregory appears to make a phone call. I swear to God, I love oh, you, bro. Hey, shut up. I love you, bro. I love you. Tell my mama I love you. See, he's having a meltdown. He's in a crisis right now, and it's a sad situation. We. We do not want to shoot you. I don't want to shoot you, bro. I just want to see your hands with nothing in it. No, I'm not putting my hands on. Kill me. A canine shows up. 
The passenger in the back seat gets out. Gregory puts his head between his legs. A gunshot goes off, leading officers to open fire. Get those units on Vista to get out. JSO says the medical examiner advised Gregory suffered a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And right before the officer started shooting, he was leaning down, his head was down, and his head went up abruptly. If he shot from the back, his head's not going to go up abruptly like that. So that leads me to believe the medical examiner's report that it was a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Ken Jefferson says the best thing to do if you are pulled over is to always comply with the officer's commands. JSO says they continue to investigate this case. We have their full statement on our website at newsforjacks.com. Reporting live, Corley Peel, Channel 4, The Local Station. Let me try it one more time. So what you're saying is when you, when you listen to the video, you didn't hear more or less 35 shots. No, I didn't hear 35 shots. But it's talking about four officers, so four oh, officers fired. Is that what you, right. Yeah. yeah, it was a, you caught, you can hear the gunshots going, but it only lasted like a few minutes for it. Uh, but, but one of the things that Chris and I was talking, he's here now, uh, but we're, we're talking about how we can be more, uh, from a biblical perspective, that's what we're going to talk about today, walking under the power of God, is when we talk to the kids, I think the compliance, uh, Brother Jackson, is, 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 is critical. But how do we come, be more offensive in nature, too, to, to address these type of atrocity? Now, what I was always saying, if you comply and you record it or you get the video camera, because you can't tell them got the camera on if they got one. If not, you can use Facebook Live. That's another option you can do. If you ever go across uh, a traffic stop, you can't go and put your Facebook Live on. That automatically start recording the incident. Right. And then any inappropriate behavior, it should be addressed in the court or reported through appropriate channels. Is probably the best option opposed to. Uh, Just make I sure they know the cell phone, right? Huh. I said, just make sure they know it's yeah, a and cell phone. I, and that's my, my point, you know. Uh, you pull out a phone and and you're recording. That already puts an officer that now he's he's got to be defensive and he's already agitated. Well, you know, one and of the so, things I think, I think that one of the things somebody said is that even a police officer was pulled over by uh, another white officer. He was black, and he was pulled over. He told him, man, uh, sir, could you put your camera on? Uh, he told him, you need to put your body camera on. The policy of Warner Robins is you're supposed to, anytime you interact with the, uh, the community, that camera is supposed to go, go on automatically. You're supposed, you know, they're supposed to cut it on. They have to test that button. Uh, but you, my point on that, too, is yeah, well, the Facebook Unfortunately, that, that's not. What always happens, and for that one, uh, yeah, that's why I want you to put your tell the people everybody listen to the video, put your Facebook live on. A lot of us got like you might can, you might not can't see it, but here's the stand, right? Most of us got stands in their car, you won't get shot because no, no, you, you want to have this on before you actually start. Is my I, I understand what, what you're saying, but. There's a lot of times that it wouldn't matter. Okay. You but, know, and, but, and 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 putting pulling out your phone and your videotaping, you know, most cops are offended by that and it Yeah, but the the, the point is that you there? Being, you know, uh, a ticket and you driving off. Now you're offending the cop, and now he's agitated, and you know things could could go. Could... And I'm not saying don't do that, 
But what I am saying is you be expected of that as well. Because especially if you're being pulled over for for something that you're suspicious of the cops for pulling you over for. You know what? Go ahead, Jim. The thing about it is they can be agitated all they want. It doesn't matter. If you get pulled over, as soon as you see the lights, everybody should be instructed to turn their cell phones on and go Facebook Live. Yep. And they should be, be able to articulate professionally for my protection yep. and your protection to make sure that both of us stay compliant with the laws. How they feel about it, who cares? Has nothing to do with it. That needs to be something that we teach that yeah. people understand and that they do, period. I know we can say, we can go to comply, 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 and we can say, you know, that's biblical principles and everything too. But then we can also say, don't eyeball me, boy. Don't walk on this side of the hot sidewalk. Don't do this and all that's complying too. There has to teach more. Know the laws and what you expect and there'll be some civility between the two. And when we start holding people accountable by yeah. cameras and recordings, yeah. we can change the things. We can't change it by just putting our head down and let them do and say and act however they want to act. And we just do everything they say. We're not going to change nothing. It's going to get worse. Unfortunately, people don't, people are not going to get better by that. I mean, unfortunately, there's going to have to be some sacrificial lambs. You know, but, I think but, but at the same time, we just have to articulate things professionally. And, and, and let people know that we're doing things for my, I'm doing it for my protection and, and for your protection as well. <laughs> exactly. We have to. Exactly. That's what they, they got body cameras for. For their well, protection. I, we, 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 we look at it from that perspective, I think Jimmy just said something that it said it's not going to, people are not going to get better. And that's, that's kind of a profound statement for us because that's what we're in the business of doing. It's helping people to become better, not changing their behavior, but actually changing their spirit. So when we when we look at these situations, and I know you, you're talking about compliance, 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 and of course with scripture that is biblical. What's the outcome that we what's the outcome that we're trying to achieve in any situation? There was something that kind of if the guy was smoking dope, he's already paranoid. I mean, I don't know. I, I got paranoid yeah, I was when I was about that. I got paranoid. And whether he's also really <laughs> confronting him or not, if he knows he has a pistol in the floor of the car, he's been smoking dope, then the natural state is kind of get paranoid and then overreact possibly to what they were doing. But that being another conversation that we can have, what was his responsibility? What was his position in Christ at the time of that, that incident? How do we get our children to such a place that they can avail themselves of divine protection? Psalm 91 is the is it a joke or is it legit? Well, one of the things that I want to show is, uh, it, it, we're going to go get started, is that there are, I want to show the arrest of Jesus Christ. And I also want to show the attempted arrest of Jesus Christ uh, in the scriptures. And I want to talk about the power and the anointing of God on our life. And the fact is, it let the, those kids know that there is, you know, the Bible said, remember uh, Elder John said, that we will be endued with power the day the Holy Spirit comes. And, and, and sometimes it appears in the Bible that we are just supposed to be passive creep, uh, believers, but there's, 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 there's different form of being passive. And there's different actions that take and Even Christ, when he got with that zeal that I'm right in the court in that uh, temple, he, he pulled out the cord, didn't he? he said, <laughs> and he whipped those people mm -hmm. out of there, right? Right, right. In other words, he he uh, confronted the 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 power and authority, and and said, "I got a high authority." Not to say that that's what you want to do, but if God tells you to do that, you know, then you, I, I, you need to. But is it? You know, I think I think that's a good point. Is it what we want to do? I mean, but, do we want to rid ourselves of every every spiritual authority that we actually put to? Uh, and, and I, I think this is like this is a great discussion, which I really I'm not going to interrupt this morning. But uh, it's a great discussion because it, it kind of draws us as believers into a place. How do we align ourselves with the Lord that we avail ourselves of all that He said He shall give His angels charge over you 
to keep bear you up, at least you dash your foot against the stone. Yeah. There is there is places in scripture that says that there is supernatural protection for those who are complying with what Christ has has ordained for us, what God has ordained for us to do. And that there is an appointed time for us all. There is a season when we are going to be offered up as a sacrifice to his glory, I guess. Right. But we can be we can live in such a manner that we are preserved until that time. Right. That's I think if I'm not stretching this. These are principles that are, are actually foundational as far as the, the kingdom is concerned. Are we in agreement with that? I mean, do we believe it? And do we teach our kids to, to comply with that, that they can avail themselves of that protection? Well, I think we need to because because look, you think even with the, um, the uh, civil rights movement, and if you take back an Old Testament of Jehoshaphat, uh, isn't that, was it, well, I think it was Jehoshaphat where they put the praise singers before them, uh, the go before an, an army, right? And they and they were singing, oh, yeah. praises, and they were singing praises, and God, yeah. God said, "This battle, the battle's not yours. The battle's mine." Amen. Right? And and they all they did was just did the praise. Uh, and if you know, even when the Montgomery when they walked across the bridge, they were singing praises as they went to the teeth of all those uh, troopers and stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, they, in other words, they were showing. I'm not afraid of you. I may, I may can't take you on. Well, I don't care. I, I'll take you on weapon for weapon. <laughs> but I'm not afraid of you, right? I, I don't have God. I don't have dogs with me. You got dogs. You got, you got uh, tear gas. You got, you got your, your, your you know, your, your band and all that stuff. But I am going directly through you to get my point across. And, and I think if we, we consider the success of the movement. Yeah. Even though they weren't using implements of war, they still succeeded. I mean, we, we made great progress when we were going through it, when we were implementing that kind of tactic. The right. thing that becomes is, is, is uh, can we still do it? I I mean, are we, we still willing to do it? Are we still willing to approach it? I think Black Lives Matter was Black Lives Matter. They won't go in there bringing no guns, brandishing guns. You know, the other side brought guns. I ain't talking to the police. There's other groups that brought guns. But I'm saying this, that the, the traditional part of the Black Lives Matter was no violence, but protest, right? They, they, they walked through the streets and they, 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 they said, can't breathe, Black Lives Matter. Um, but they still confronted the uh, the powers of eight. They I'm, also said pigs in the bank and fry them, fry them like bacon too. So right. they were inciting. They were inciting <laughs> violence as well too. They weren't. They weren't as complicit as we try to act like they were. Well, but I I, I, I I understand what you're saying though. I agree okay. because the point I'm saying is that the you're going to have people mixing the movement, and we also found out there was a uh, there was some from the conservative side that actually were instigating some of the, the uh, activities for violence. But I'm saying the overall leadership directive was not violence, but peaceful protest. Is, is there, there is a place where Jesus talked to you two brothers and he said, who made me a divider between the two of you? They were arguing over whether or not he should share his wealth with the right. other brother. And it seems as though Jesus at some point, even when the angel met Joshua, that he came in with an agenda that had nothing to do with either side, either secular side. Well, there was something that they introduced into the mix that was just God himself. It, it, it was a kingdom. And and and, and, I, and I'm, here I am with another one of these questions that I'm trying to get answered. The kingdom of God in, in, in reference to the world system, we're not going to align with either side, literally. Because well, if the kingdom yeah, is free, free. Free. They, they, they put themselves in harm's way and if the cops shot this guy, is it a fight between devils or is it, is it something that the kingdom is supposed to get in and to decide whether or not they were right or just to look at it and say, okay, if you had done this, you would have, <laughs> Lord, if you had done this, you would not have violated God's law. And that's what I'm trying to, I'm trying to really get in my head because I know there's a secular world that we're living in that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Are we supposed to introduce the kingdom principles in that divine or supernatural kingdom that we're, we're privy, I mean, that we're a part of into that mix. You know, we're only responsible for that. 
or are we really to judge between what's happening in the world system? Well, I don't know. Let me just say this real quick. Go ahead. I think that we have to, uh, and I think it's biblical, to respect authority and those that are in authority over us, that we that we that we comply and respect that, and we be professional and articulate, not without an emotional response and a retaliative response to whatever is going on. Yeah. Uh, 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 this militancy, I think, is going to hurt us if we try to be militant, because exactly. then, right. obviously, whatever level you raise to, they're going to raise to the same level. Exactly. But some people are out there to do you harm, and regardless of how civil and respectful you be, right. they're not going to comply, and they're going to do something to you anyway. There's not a whole lot. Then we just have to pray that the, that, the, that the protection of God is over our lives at that particular point, because we're doing what we're supposed to do from a godly fashion. And they're just going to be what they're going to be. We can't we can't excuse that. But I think that when you if you because I've gotten stopped several times, I've always had my pistol. I always show them my license and no one, none of them have ever flinched. They are. I, thank you. I appreciate that. But I don't need to see it. But I, I believe in the Second Amendment as well. You have the right to carry. It. Where is it? It's over there. OK, cool. No problem. And it's never been an issue. But I've always been very respectful and very professional. But then, too, I know when they're asking me to do things that's not lawful and I call them on it, that, that, that they may not enjoy that, but at least they know they're not going to be to pull the wool over my eyes and play all kind of games. Exactly. And I think we have to teach that as well, too. But, I mean, I think emotions bring on a lot of things. But, I mean, it's in line. But, but I do think they have an obligation that the kingdom of God is like yeast. The Bible teaches us and that it, it leavens the whole lump. And that it will have an effect. And that is part of our responsibility to always display the attributes of the kingdom. Yeah. And sometimes that means we are going to be persecuted. That's just the way life is. Yeah. And sometimes it's going to work to our favor. Exactly. And then, yeah. You know, even uh, Elder, when uh, the, uh, you remember in the scripture where they say, hey, you need to run because Herod is looking for you. And Jesus said, you tell that fox, you know, I got the day and I got the night. I got some stuff to do. And when I finish, you know, God can get the glory on that. But you go tell that fox, I ain't basically saying is, I ain't going nowhere. And, and, and he was, because uh, he was, he was, body, he was body in his father's will. You know, <laughs> yeah. I was, this this, this <laughs> where, 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 to, to, it's like, there seems to be an urgency to me for us to align ourselves with the Lord, to, 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 to avail ourselves of all the divine protection that he has. My expectation that the world system is going to do what it's supposed to do is is legit. They're going to be corrupt. I think exactly. every officer that don't know God, he's going to be out there doing stuff. He ain't got the minutes doing because that's just exactly. Me. And so if I approach him, the worst is I've been I've been pulled over by cops and I was drunk as a skunk. And it's only by divine protection that that same cop that pulled me over led me to my house. They led me back to the highway so that I can. I had had a wreck. I ran into. Well, this is about, about a foreground in my history, but I remember the one scripture said, whatever that, when your adversary, agree with thine adversary while thou on the way, if you don't, you, you turn you over to the, and so forth. That was the only scripture that I can remember at that time. I had run into two young white women in their cars. They had had a wreck previously, was still bandaged up for that. A, a little kid was in the back of the car and he was on the floor after I hit. I was, and I was drunk. And the woman said, he was driving so slow, I thought he was drunk. And she spoke the truth, and I was sitting in the cop's car. So I knew I was going to jail. <coughs> but only scripture I could remember was agree with that adversary, and it worked. He led, the same cop that should have put me in jail was the same cop that led me back to the road to get me back to my house, because I didn't know how to get there, because I was dead to her. Amen. Hey, let me, let's me. let go ahead and <laughs> let's, pray, let's pray here so we keep, we'll keep the conversation going. I want to start off, because I, there's some scripture I want to show I, the whole purpose really is to show that for believers and those who will become believers, that you, you right, Elder, we're going to talk about what power do we walk in, right? Mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. and, and how that, has that been demonstrated in the Bible is what I want to show. So, mm -hmm. Brother Jackson, could you pray us in, please? 